You're listening to the Author Stories Podcast. Bringing you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Margaret Wine, Terry Brooks, Sheena Kamal, Matthew Quick, JT Ellison, Walt D. Williams, Brad Ford, Corey, Dr. O. Brandon Sanders, Robin Mom, Ernest Klein, Tim Butcher, Sherwin Harris. Visit hankgarner.com for archives of all the shows. Today's guest is. Thanks for joining me again for the Author Stories Podcast, where I bring you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Today, I am super excited to have Mike Madden back on the show with me today. Uh, he's here to talk about the uh, the new book, Tom Clancy, Firing Point, uh, which is uh, book 29 in the Jack Ryan universe. Is that right, Mike? Uh, in the Tom Clancy verse, I think so. Yeah. I mean, there's quite a few. It's number four for me in, on my contribution. It's absolutely insane. Um, I remember reading my first Tom Clancy book in, in the late eighties. I I think it was the hunt for red October. Uh, absolutely. First one. Oh my gosh. I, I still love that book. I, he, I think he reinvented the genre, if not invented an entire genre called, you know, a military techno thriller, but it's a great story by itself. It, it is. Great. You know, the, the thing that I loved about Tom Clancy and, and you continue this, um, uh, this this great um, series and and genre um, was how accessible he made really really complex things um, without uh, dumbing it down for people like me who were who were not um, you know I, I'm not adept at uh, you know, military strategy and uh, all this stuff but made me come away not only smarter, but, but feeling like I had actually learned something and I was more informed about the world around me when I got done while having a good time. Um, that, that's a real skill and, and an art, really, if, if you get down to it. Well, you've just summarized, I think, Tom Clancy perfectly. Um, that's just a, a brilliant way to put it. He uh, created these great iconic characters that we care about. Um, he put technology in, in their hands. Um, but it wasn't technology for technology's sake or violence for violence sake. He was just a great storyteller, but he managed to elevate technology almost to the level of character and he never let it get in the way of the story. It always served the story. So I agree with you. He, he was a genuine master. I think in years to come, he'll be appreciated not as a genre writer, but just as a writer. Absolutely. Um, Mike, let, let's recap for some of the audience who might not have listened to our previous show. And, and I'll put a link to our, previous show i think uh, episode 652 was uh uh when you were on uh before but um tell people a little bit about your history you um uh, are uh, of course a um uh a novelist that has taken over um this series for tom clancy uh but before that what were you doing uh what how did you earn your chops <laughs> <laughs> well I am a living proof. It's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> so there's no doubt. That's why I am where I am. I'm very you and I blessed. Both. I'm fortunate. Um, I, I will also add uh, to steal a line. Uh, I also found the harder I work, the luckier I get. So um, I was uh, given this amazing opportunity. It's so much fun. Such a thrill ride for me as a writer to be part of this world in this um, franchise. Um, but I, I think the reason why Tom Colgan asked me to join the campus was because I had a four book series called Drone that he was the um, editor for the paperback series. And so he um, uh, when an opening came up, he gave me a call and said, hey, would you like to uh, take your hand at a Tom Clancy novel? So, of course, it was the greatest literary day of my life. I mean, what an honor, what a privilege, what a, a gobsmacked moment. I, you know, why me? How me? So, of course, I say yes with all my enthusiasm, and I hang up the phone, and suddenly my greatest literary day becomes my most terrifying day because now <laughs> I have to write a Tom Clancy novel. So, you know, but hey, you, 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 you put on the shorts, and you put on the big gloves, and you got the, the shoes on. If you're in the ring and, and, and the referee rings the bell, you better go fight or get out of the ring. So I took a swing at it and have been swinging ever since and just love it. You you mentioned your drone series. Um, what was the initial 
um, uh, motivation to start that series. Uh, I, I know you were you were not working as a as a novelist. Uh, you were you know working in the real world. Um, but what was it about uh, about this idea that that first got you going? Well, I think like everybody else, you know, uh, when the Gulf War or the well, the first and second Gulf Wars happened, certainly. And then uh, following, um, if you follow the news at all regarding the war on terror, you kept hearing the word drone. And I had a, an idea of what they were and what they could do because um, actually drones, the first drone patent was issued in 1898 uh, to, of all people, no surprise, Nikola Tesla uh, for what he called the Tele Automaton, which is actually uh, what you and I would call an RC boat. But um, so this idea of remotely controlling without wires uh, another vehicle is really not new. But we only really got into serious combat, combat applications uh, towards the uh, – in the 1990s. And ironically, um, as it turns out, the first place that we used uh, drones in a combat environment for live feeds to like the Pentagon or the White House was during the uh, Bosnia War in the 1990s, which I actually wrote about in – one of my Tom Clancy novels. So I was just paying attention to w wars and politics in general because that's what I do. Heard about the drone thing. And I, I just started thinking about the implications. What happens when you automate warfare? What happens when you remove you know, humans from the battlefield? And uh, then what's the logic behind that? And you find out that, in fact, the logic is to remove, remove humans out of the loop entirely. Uh, human, uh, humans uh, wage war. War is a, a very human activity, uh, right or wrong, good or bad, it's what we do. But ironically, um, the way this technology is moving, humans are the thing that most get in the way of warfare. Uh, the human body is extremely fragile. Uh, our, our brains are a couple of pounds of mush inside of a, of a bone sloshing around in a fluid. Uh, not good in high kinetic environments. So our planes fly faster than our bodies can handle. Um, our submarines can, can go deeper. The list goes on and on and on. Take a human out of the actual combat system. Now you can really rock and roll. And so all the technology and all the physics and all of the logic uh, is moving toward completely automated warfare. So all that was kind of stirring me as I was thinking about this stuff. And the more I dove into it, the more exciting it became. So I thought, well, it might be a way to tell a story about this. So I've been in a character called Troy Pierce. A man who loves his country but no longer trusts his government and decides to go into the private sector and start his own um, security company deploying drones. And off the series went. I, I love that series so much, and, and Troy Pierce is such a great character. Um, how, how does Troy Pierce and his series differ from Tom Clancy's world that you get to dip into and, 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 and take over these you know fantastic characters they created? And, and really this this world that Tom Clancy created, how, how does it differ when you sit in that chair as opposed to when you sit in uh, Troy Pierce's chair? Well, that's a really interesting question. Um, no one's asked me that before. Uh, the similarities between two are, are obvious. I think um, anybody that writes a techno thriller today uh, under their own name or not is basically writing a Tom Clancy novel. Oh, I, I think Tom Clancy absolutely. invented the genre. So in some ways, I was already writing Tom Clancy novels. I just didn't know it. You're right. We're all writing Tom Clancy fan fiction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so um, probably the biggest difference, to be perfectly honest, is the characters that Tom Clancy created. Um, you know, they've reached sort of iconic status, and rightly so. I mean, President Ryan is the president that all of us want, and it's, it's interesting. Um, I've got fans who are somewhat left of center, and I've got fans who are somewhat right of center. But everybody loves President Ryan, and, and the reason is obvious. It's because there's a politician who will always do the right thing no matter the personal cost, you know, politically or otherwise. So he's a, he's, a, he's a model of selfless service. So I love writing with him and for him and about him. Uh, it's not surprising he'd have a son named Jack Ryan Jr. who would have many of the same characteristics. So for me, um, when I step into the Clancy world, it's not so much the technology – or the bad guys, or you know, the geopolitical conflict. It really is those characters, and I love those characters. They're part of me. They always will be, and it's been a joy to, uh, especially with the Jack Ryan Jr. character, sort of develop him and push him along further. Want to grow as a writer and take your writing to the next level? 
Give Pro Writing Aid a try. Pro Writing Aid is a grammar checker, style editor, and writing mentor in one package. Pro Writing Aid will never replace a human editor. Rather, it helps you self-edit to a deeper level so that when you send it off to an editor, they will be able to focus on the meat of your writing and not spend their time fixing basic writing issues. Pro Writing Aid is the only platform that offers world-class grammar and style checking combined with more in-depth reports to help you strengthen your writing. Our unique combination of suggestions, articles, videos, and quizzes makes writing fun and interactive. Writing can be grammatically perfect but still feel awkward and clumsy. Pro Writing Aid searches out elements like repetitiveness, vague wording, sentence length variation, over-dependence on adverbs, passive voice, over-complicated sentence structures, and so much more. Nothing makes a writer lose credibility faster than spelling and grammar mistakes. Submit clean, error-free writing. Go to ProWritingAid.com and use code HANK20 for 20% off of Pro Writing Aid Premium. Pro Writing Aid. Check it out today. You know, the thing that I loved about Clancy, was, and, it, and it began with the hunt for Red October and you know went through the, the bear and the dragon and uh, the teeth of the tiger, the, the whole gamut, um, was I could always depend that when I picked up a new Clancy novel, I knew that I was going to, to learn something that I didn't know. I was going to be challenged in ways that, uh, that maybe I had not been challenged before to, to think about things differently. Uh, and to also look at the world around me uh, and know that there was more going on uh, than I was aware of. Um, Clancy had this uncanny ability to predict the way things were going to go and to even think about how technology would evolve. Um, and, you know, and he was just a layperson in the beginning. Of, now, of course, he, he gained contacts and, and probably, you know, info as he... Uh, became more popular, but but he had this uncanny ability to to think um, about how things would go, and, and he was he was right on on so many levels and in, in, in so many uh, cases. Um, how do you because you do the same thing? Um, you think about the way things are now, and you know take that out to its logical conclusion. Conclusion, but sometimes there's some illogical jumps that happen. Um, that that turn out to be right because we can't see this natural progression. How do you think, like like Clancy did, um, and and think about what is to come and how that may happen? Yeah, well, that thank was you. a long winded answer. I'm sorry, I'm a question. No, it's, it's a great question, uh, and somewhere in there is a compliment that even suggests I <laughs> approach his abilities. Yes, uh, I will thank you for that compliment, and I'll step away from it because Tom Clancy was unique. Uh, in every sense of the word, um, to the extent I try to do some of the things he did, um, there, you're absolutely right. It's not possible to predict the future, but it's amazing how close you can get to the shape of things to come by doing a couple of things. And one is, of course, paying close attention to current trends. Um, but the second thing is, is, you know, the old saying is uh, the past is prologue. And in one sense, there is nothing new under the sun. So I, as a fiction writer, I feel like my first responsibility is to tell the truth. Strangely, I'm, I'm making things up and I sit in a room and talk to imaginary people all day. But I think in some ways it's easier to talk about the truth when you're not uh, you know, generating nonfiction. Because suddenly, especially in our culture right now, um, you know, facts are, are, are politically and emotionally charged things. So when you step in the fiction world, uh, suddenly you're in the world of non-reality, and it's actually easier to talk about reality. So one of the uh, issues from history that to me is absolutely fascinating and terrifying at the same time is the Spanish Civil War. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to write about it, and I did it in this novel, you know, the, my current firing point. Um, I, I got into the subject because, again, I'm not writing history books. I'm writing awesome Tom Clancy fiction. But as I'm developing a story, you know, what, what is really driving me, what gets me excited, what gets me interested, uh, there's a current political event going on a, well, a couple years before I wrote this novel. And that was that the uh, people of uh, Catalonia, uh, which is a province of Spain where, where Barcelona is located, 
they uh, voted for independence to break away from Madrid and from Spain to form their own country because they're, they're a unique cultural, historical, and linguistic group. They've been around since the time of the Visigoths, if not far earlier than that. So they're, they're an ancient people. 92% of them said, yeah, we want to leave and form our own government. We believe, you know, Americans believe in things like voting, you know, one person, one vote, self-determination. So they voted and the Spanish government said, mm, no, I don't think so. And here come, you know, becomes the, the police and the jackboots and the batons and the tear gas and a million Catalonians flood into the streets. And we're still in the streets when my wife and I tried to fly there last year to Barcelona. In fact, they shut down the Barcelona airport uh, for two days before we got there. But fortunately, it opened up when we snuck in and got to hang out there for a while. But if you understand and study the Catalonian conflict, you see its roots really go back to the Spanish Civil War. So in this a conversation of the Spanish Civil War, and I won't reproduce that conversation here, obviously, because it's in the book. But if you think about what happened during that war, you see it play, being played out still you know, in Europe today and around the world, the, the fundamental issues. And uh, these issues aren't going away. And as a thriller writer, um, my job is first to entertain, tell a great story. I believe I have to tell the truth in doing that. But the best way to do that is to look at things like history and trends and then draw conclusions and parallels and then maybe speculate how that might be playing out, you know, in our near future. And so far, uh, so, you know, not a bad track record. Not a bad track record at all. Um, one thing that uh, that was so great uh, about Clancy and 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 continues to be so um, is that that um, these stories are. Uh, are huge stories. Um, a, a friend of mine and I uh, years ago used to joke w when we would read the new Clancy book, because we'll, well, we're 120 pages in and he's still introducing characters. Like there's, there's a huge <laughs> cast of characters on, on this big world stage. Yet we become so involved in their personal stories that, that the, the story just, just, uh, you know, feels like it's going at a rocket pace even though it's this kind of big sprawling story. Um, when you start thinking of a new uh, Jack Ryan universe book and, and Jack Ryan Jr. who, who you're writing, um, how does that story begin for you? Or do you think of, you know, there's a, there's a certain piece of technology and I want to explore how this is going, or is it a, a geopolitical event? And I would really like to expand on this and see where this goes. Is it one of the characters? Um, what's that first kernel of an idea that then you begin to expand upon? Yeah, another really wonderful question. Um, every writer has their own you know, path, their own journey. There are many ways to the top of the mountain. Mine is my own. I'm sort of in constant research and monitoring mode. That's probably the, the benefit and the curse of the information age is there's a lot of information. Uh, right. sometimes too much and some of it, in fact, a lot of it you can't trust. So you have to double and triple check your sources and whatnot. But, um, for me, <clears throat> what drives me is, um, always a theme. The, the theme is the unifying, uh, uh part of the whole. It, it's, it's the central nervous system of every story I do. And so for me, uh, as an event like October 1st, 2017 for Catalonia pops up, um, I start to think issues about like, you know, what's really at, at stake there. And part of, so the theme for firing point is the idea of loyalty. The thing that you're loyal to or the things or the people you're loyal to are the things that you're willing to fight and die for, or the things that you're willing to walk away from and, and, and drop, or even, you know, war against because you're trying to protect the things that you're loyal to. And loyalty is an important issue. I, the previous book, uh, it was also, it was about trust. And trust is another big issue. And they go together. Yeah. Um, uh, markets and politics only function, and I, let me back that up, uh, Western liberal democracy and, and Western liberal capitalism, whatever that means, only function if there's trust. Um, Amazon is this global phenomenon, you know, trillion dollar company. Jeff Bezos may be the first trillionaire on the planet because of its success. But if every time I got on Amazon to order something, I thought there was a 50-50 chance they wouldn't send me anything or they'd charge me double after I bought it, they'd lose business. So uh, Amazon works because I trust it. Um, democracy works because I believe when I cast my vote that my vote is counted and that uh, there isn't massive fraud taking place. 
that when the politician says they'll do what they say they'll do, that they do it. So once you start losing trust in the political system, the political system uh, evaporates. Same thing in markets. So when you have a society that has struggling with trust, and then fast forward to the current story, the questions of loyalty, uh, all kinds of, of fissures open up and, and the ground begins to shake beneath your feet. And as you know, the uh, techno thriller novels are about violence. They're about uh, organized violence, violence by governments, uh, violence by individuals and, and by non-state actors. And so putting all that violence in the context, in this case, in the story of loyalty, is, uh, was the thing that got me excited. So if I'm not excited, I know the reader won't be. And that's what sustains me, exploring this issue of loyalty in a political context. And, and then I begin to build a story from there. The Novel Factory Online is software for the serious writer. With features like notes that are automatically organized, that means no more drowning in piles of paper, notes, or spending hours organizing digital folder structures. The Novel Factory offers clear, obvious structures for noting down information about plot, characters, locations, and everything else relating to your novel. Innovative features like the Roadmap take you from concept to finished novel. The Roadmap is an optional step-by-step -step guide to writing a novel that takes you from the premise to final manuscript and beyond. It draws on tried-and-true, tested theory that lies behind the majority of best-selling novels and blockbuster movies. Access your writing anywhere. The web version of the Novel Factory can be accessed anywhere you have internet. So you can write your novel on the train to work, while walking the dog, or climbing a mountain. Just log in and all your drafts and notes will be at your fingertips. Go to novel-writer.com to see how this powerful software can unleash your creative side. Use code HANK2020 for 20% off. That's the Novel Factory. So we we start with this kind of large nebulous sort of theme um, that that you're then going to start weaving um, the story and characters through. Um, we when we first open the book, we're 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 met with Jack Ryan Jr. of course, and he runs into an old friend, um, Renee Moore. Um, how do you then start building a story about Jack and Renee? And, and what happens with them? Yeah, in terms of the story, I suppose it's not um, a surprise or, or giving a plot point away since it's on the cover of, of the dust jacket. But um, Jack and Renee, and I'll give you an example of how the theme works for me. So Jack and Renee had been romantically involved in college several years before. But <clears throat> she'd made a commitment, and they were both in finance classes together, and she made a commitment to really pursue a career in Wall Street. She was very money-motivated. So what she was loyal to was her own ambition, her, her own desire for wealth and power. And that's just not where Jack was. Jack, even though he was studying you know, some history and some finance, was still very much a patriot because he's his father's son. And so he grew up in a tradition in his family of that service is more important and sacrifice is more important than self-aggrandizement. One of the reasons why they broke up. So to have them come back together and just for a moment – um, rekindles some things in Jack because on his journey of self-sacrifice, that sacrifice has meant things like not able to have a long-term relationship, let alone marriage. And so when she walks in the door, it so stirs something in him. Uh, he's got to go. She's got a meeting. They exchange a card. He walks out the door, and suddenly an explosion. Massive bombing takes place. He rushes back in to help her. She's literally dying in his arms and whispers a single word. Samler, and she she perishes. What does that mean? Well, that loyalty to her and her death sends him on a mission. I'm going to find out, you know, who are the terrorist killers that did this, and so off he goes to to chase them down. And so then exploring the issues that well, what motivated the people that did the bombing, and what are they loyal to? So you know, on and on it goes, both with nations, with individuals, with organizations, with political movements. Questions of history, culture, language. Um, that's how you pull these things together. It, it's as simple as, as someone once said, sitting in front of a computer, opening up a vein and bleeding on it. <laughs> well, let's take our reader hat off just for a moment and put our writer hat on. Um, when you're 
when, when you first start thinking about a, a story like this and you're thinking about the, the themes and then um, you start thinking about characters and, and how can I can I, how can I create a situation to put these characters in that then I can start exploring uh, this theme uh, with? Um, what is the planning process like for a book like this? Um, and and does planning a, a Jack Ryan book does that differ from planning uh, you know one of one of a Troy Pierce book? Um, do you approach these projects differently? Um, I, th- the short answer to your last question is yes, and I, and I surely hope so. I I I, all, I always want to say my current book is my best book, not because of sales, though I'm not opposed to the book selling, but because I want to be a better writer. And if I keep if I if I'm growing as a writer, that means my process is evolving, the way I attack a problem is is changing, the way I, I hit the page is, is different. So the Overall, I have approached all eight books. And I can't believe I just said that out loud. I've written eight books now. Oh my gosh! Again, pinch me. Uh, I've approached all eight books generally the same way, and that is, I, I want to build the best possible outline I can. Uh, Stephen King, who's written I think about eleven thousand novels at this point, says that he starts with an idea, or starts with a person and a problem, and just lets it go, and he develops it as he goes. I'm just not that smart. So I need to know where this thing is going. So the my theme is the spinal cord, and then everything uh, attaches to it: locations, characters, um, conflicts. I mean, the whole nine yards. And so I, I, I start laying out this um, very uh, intricate, structured outline, and that gets me from point A to point Z, just like when we go on vacation, grab the the trip tick, and go. But like any good vacation, you don't, you know, the point isn't the map and the point isn't arriving. <laughs> the point is enjoy the journey. And so even though this thing is pretty heavily laid out, if I want to pull off on the turnout and have a, a picnic lunch with my wife, I'm going to do that. If I'm going to, you know, smash the, 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 the gas pedal into the floor so I can, you know, get to an early matinee in the next town, I'm going to do that too. So there's lots and lots of room for creative uh, improvisation within the outline so for me to, to bring all these details all these facts and figures all of these uh weapon systems uh into play to keep the characters m- properly motivated understood and making the correct choices i need it laid out for me but it's in the day-to-day play is where the story really happens have you ever had a situation where um you know in in the moment in the heat of writing a, a character does something that you're not prepared for, and the story just goes left on you. Uh, that has happened, and my experience is when it goes left, that usually leads to a brick wall or a precipice of doom. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yes. But I will say this: I, I know when I'm chugging along properly because uh you get in the shower in the morning with every intention of shaving and suddenly a line of dialogue comes out of your mouth i've literally had characters crack jokes on me while i was writing i wasn't trying to write a joke the joke came out from the character and i laugh out loud i thought well that was really funny I, wait a minute <laughs> who said that so that's that's when i know i know the characters that's when i know that they're real that's when i know that they're making you know strong choices and um, that's the place I want to want to get to, but I can't get to there if I haven't done the proper motivation, and haven't done haven't done the legwork and and the structure work up front. I love when you're reading back over a manuscript and you go, "Wow, I I am not that profound. Where did that come from?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's great. Um, Tom, uh, excuse me, not uh, Jack Ryan Jr. Um, is the star of this book and, and the the books that you've written before. Uh, we know what's going on with with Dad, uh, President of the United States. Um, Jack Ryan Jr. has so many of the same motivations as his father, yet he is his own distinct character, um, and and really really shines uh in in these books as as his own person and uh and a person that doesn't always make the choices that his dad would um how do you separate these two characters to make sure junior is 
uh, is developing and growing into his own character while still holding on to the things that his dad has done that that inform his character. No, and that's again, it's a very perceptive and, and wonderful question. The, the the danger, obviously, up front is you have a character named Jack Ryan Jr. Uh, the temptation would be to fall in the trap of saying, oh, he must be just like Senior. Um, in, in the story world and in my own mind, in my own heart, as I've built this character, he absolutely loves and admires his father. I mean, because we do, for the same reasons. Uh, but it's also his dad. And so um, we're all fathers and sons, whether or not we're connected or whether or not those relationships were great and wholesome or challenging or or nurturing. I mean, we all come from a different experience and, uh, but we're still, uh, uh, we're still sons and daughters of our fathers. And so it's a human experience. Uh, it's very often a painful one. It's sometimes a joyful one. So for me, drawing on the whole question of what does it mean to be a father? What does it mean to be a son? Or what helps inform me as I write this character? And secondly, to really respect Junior as a real character. He, he is his own man. You're a writer. You know the secret of writing. Every character thinks they're the hero of the story. That's right. Uh, and and they are, if you've written them properly. So no matter who you're writing, you know if you think that you know they think they're a protagonist, it, it helps. It helps answer a lot of questions. So I, I respect Jack Junior who he is. He absolutely loves and admires his father, but he has the curse of being a junior, and so he's his own man and wants to be his own man, and his father wants him to be his own man. They, they, his, his parents want him to be independent. And as a 29 to 30 year old man, he is obviously, but he still though is drawn back to, uh, the, the warmth and, and, and the, the nurturing environment that his parents always have given him and still give him. And that's why I, it's so important to me to draw on those emotions. Uh, certainly alluding to him at the beginning, because Jack is still looking for you know, a long-term relationship with a woman and ideally to marry, because his parents have done that and have modeled that for him, but I wanted to really round out that uh, that that emotional arc by having Jack and his parents, you know, once again um, encounter each other toward the end with with I hope uh, an emotionally satisfying ending. And and it is that it it is uh, you know when you close that back cover you're just like God we he did it to me again. Um, the new book Tom Clancy's Firing Point. Um, it, I, I love this book so much. Uh, Mike, you are doing a fantastic job of carrying that torch. And, um, you, you know, when, when I opened the book, uh, uh, you know, at, at first I'm, I'm thinking of Tom Clancy's legacy and, and then I'm thinking of, you know, what is Mike going to bring to this, um, that's new and fresh and, you know, four or five pages in, I just forget all that because it's just a great story. And uh, I, I'm recommending this book to everyone um, this summer. Today, when we're recording this, is release day for this book. So happy release day. And uh, we'll put links to the book and and uh, all that great stuff in the show notes. Um, where can people find you, Mike, if they want to connect with you online and dig into all the great stuff that you do? Oh, thank you so much the, for very kind words. I, I so appreciate it. You have no idea. Um I'm a fan, first and foremost, and I would never want to disappoint the fans. Um, the easiest way to get a hold of me is just go to MikeMadden.com, spelled coincidentally the same way my name is, uh, with one D. Sounds like the coach or the shoes, but it's MikeMadden.com. And all of my links, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, email. I, I love hearing from my fans. I, I love interacting with writers, and especially new writers. So uh, I hope to hear from, from folks. P please reach out. I, I, I love that connection. Absolutely. We'll put links to your website uh, in the show notes of the episode. Mike, this has been so much fun chatting. I know you've got a lot of press to do today. Um, please come back again when we can spend some more time and, uh, and, and talk writing some more. Hank, that would be so awesome. I can't think of a better way to spend a half an hour or more. World Anvil is a browser-based world-building platform designed for all world builders, writers and novelists, dungeon masters, game developers, and everyone else. World Anvil keeps your world settings safe and organized, helps you find your characters, locations, plots, timelines, and maps quickly and easily as you write. Then, if you choose, you can showcase your amazing world building to the world, beautifully and interactively, to keep your readers engaged. 
You can even use our professional tier to build your career selling access to behind the scenes content your readers will love and growing your community. Build your world setting in any genre with over 25 custom built world building templates complete with prompts to inspire your creativity. Allow your readers to explore the public parts of your world in an innovative new way with interactive maps, timelines, and wiki-style articles. Give special access to co-authors, beta readers, customers, or patrons to see exclusive behind-the-scenes content. There's a free version to get started with with all of the major features. Guild membership offers you a host of extra options including comprehensive privacy settings, co-authors, presentation options, and so much more. Join our community of over 800,000 world builders, including professional authors. Take part in competitions and learn more about world building at this fantastic online community. Use the coupon code HANK to get 20% off all 6 and 12 month subscriptions. WorldAnvil.com I'm a recent convert and I know you will be too.